What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 12 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we're just being asked to find the slope of the line that passes through these two points, 2, 3, and 8, 6. Now in order to do a question like this and do it really well, you'll need to know how to find the slope between two points, except this time we don't have a graph. I'm actually going to solve this in two ways. I will solve it the graphing way, which I really like, and then I will solve it using the actual slope formula, and we'll see that we get the same answer. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and put my graph down. Zoom that out. So my two points, and we'll assume each of these is just one, so one, two, one, two. My two points are the point x of two, y of three, so that's right two, and up three. And then x of eight, y of six, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then up one, two, three, four, five, six. If I can try to kind of visualize this line here, and as with almost everything I draw, this is very poorly drawn, um, but we'll go ahead and figure out our slope using my trick where we just count up or down as we go right. So first, from this point to this point, as we go right, we're also heading up. So I'm looking for how many squares up I'm going as I go right, and I can count up one, two, three up, and then one, two, three, four, five, six right, which means if I want to write my slope as a fraction, it's going to be three up for six right, and they will be expecting you to simplify this, and I'll show you how this can work on the graph as well. So if I simplify 3 over 6, I can divide by 3 on both sides and just get 1 half. Now if you look on this graph, you can see that we can go 3 up and 6 right easily, but I can also go 1 up and 2 right, 1 up, 2 right, and 1 up, 2 right. And we can see this one up and to right pattern in the simplified fraction, and we just did it three times, which makes sense because three is what I divided my numerator and denominator by in this slope fraction. So we're looking for a slope of one half or three sixths. We got there from the graph, but I do want to go over the actual slope formula. So let's zoom that back in. Now the actual slope formula is going to require me to name each of these four numbers. Now, I'm going to start by just calling this point 1 and this point 2. Every point has an x and a y, so from point 1, I'll have x1 and y1. In point 2, I'll have x2 and y2. Now, from here, um, I need to actually write out this formula that we're going to use for slope, and it looks like this. Our slope is equal to our second y minus our first y, and that's going to be divided by our second x minus our first x. So we can think of this as like how much y is changing and how much x is changing, similar to the up or down on top and how far right we're going on the bottom. Um, but this is a more formal way that actually has us use the four numbers here. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in where they need to be plugged in. Um, if I'm using this formula, then my y2 is 6, my y1 is 3. This is going to be divided by my x2, which is 8, minus my x1, which is 2. 6 minus 3 is 3. 8 minus 2 is 6. That's the same fraction that we got from looking on the graph, and I can still say that it just equals one half. And since this is simplified, that's going to be my answer. So using the formula or using the graph, I got the same answer. My slope is one half. We're going one square up for every two squares that we're going right. And now I need to actually fill this in. So I'm going to come up to my gridded response boxes. One gets its own box. 
a right slash, meaning a fraction, gets its own box. And then my denominator 2 gets its own box, and I need to bubble in under each space my 1, my slash, and my 2. So there's two ways to find slope that I demonstrated with this problem, and also how to write a fraction into our gridded response boxes.